Ah, I bid you welcome. I shall be your game master for this tale. It is a pleasure to have you. Now then, just like this, I will be using cards to draw you into the world of this story. From time to time, you may be presented with choices like this. Incorrect. It doesn't mean anything, but still. You're following along with all this, I trust? Moving on, I believe your experience of the story will be shaped in no small part by my narration. As such, I hope you'll have rather more fun keeping the sound on while you play. That said, rest assured that the game remains enjoyable without sound. My words will be subtitled just as they are now. With the formalities sorted, we're all ready to begin the game. My, my. Yeah, you can hear the sound of the waves. Oh, how very evocative. <laughs> now then, let's begin our tale. <clears throat> Allow me to welcome you to the world of Voice of Cards. You're about to step into the shoes of the hero of this tale as he sets forth on a grand adventure. Said adventure takes place in a remote part of the sea, in which ancient traditions are alive and well. You will touch the hearts of many who dwell in this place as you journey to change fate's promise of untold ruin. I believe in you. I believe your journey will be a success. And on that note, it is time for that journey to begin. May the waves see you safely across the tides. Our story begins in a secluded grotto. The sound of the waves echoes softly across the rock walls. A solitary young man stands in front of a ship floating in the water. Brush in hand, he busies himself painting the vessel. Once he finishes his work, he decides to carve his name into the side of the hull. A finishing touch.
You carve your name in small lettering into the ship. Oh, a handsome name, that. This young lad is the hero of our tale, and your window into the world. You're a navigator without a ship, and your soul yearns to set out upon the ocean blue for your own reasons. You have spent a great deal of time repairing the wrecked ship before you in the hopes of crafting a partner aboard which you might sail the high seas. The sound of a wooden box tumbling to the ground rips through the grotto. You heave a deep sigh and decide to head over to the source of the racket. You need to head over to the source of the noise, so you turn back around. The source of the noise turns out to be a young girl. It looks as though she has knocked over a wooden box, packed with shipbuilding supplies, and is in quite a panic about it. The girl's name is Laddie. You came across her some time ago, collapsed on a beach. You attempted to bring her to a nearby village, but she was quite opposed to the idea for some reason. As such, she has been helping you repair the ship here. You're not quite sure how to respond to her knocking the box over. It's okay, you say in a gentle, reassuring tone. Laddie's worried expression melts away, replaced by one of relief. You move to leave the grotto saying, I'm going to the village to get some food. Laddie waves goodbye, her forlorn smile seeing you off. The young woman has lost her ability to speak. Neither of you have any knowledge of how she ended up in her situation, and you spend many quiet hours together in the grotto. The scent of the sea and a sense of isolation hang heavy in the air. The island is bound for ruin and has had its name since before any can really recall. This is Omega Isle. You take a deep breath and then set out for the nearby Omega Village, which shares the island's name. You have arrived near the entrance of the village. You spy a shadow skulking about in the midst of a thicket. The shadows fall away to reveal a small monster. It's unusual to see one this close to the village. It might be cute, but it's still a monster and a threat. You must slay the beast before it can cause trouble or worse in the village. Gorgeous flower beds burst with blossoms that will one day wilt and wither away, much like Omega Village itself. This is a village that has accepted its fate to be but a moment in time, destined to fade. An island in want of a maiden shall fall, he mutters, to no one in particular.
Home sweet home. You lay yourself down and close your eyes. This might be the last time I see this flower bed, the boy says gazing forlornly at the flowers. A lone woman diligently cleans the grounds of the maiden shrine. The windows are closed, and it's too dark to see much inside. All sound seems to fall away. I wish I got to be the maiden, the girl says mournfully, dressed head to toe in maiden garb and clearly pretending to be such. Ha <laughs> ha 